Well, good morning, guys. Welcome to day six of the Wilderness Living Challenge. This is season six. We're doing a homesteading edition. This is your first video. You missed a whole ton of stuff. You should go back and check it out. Anyway, just got back from deer hunting. It was a decent morning. Um, you know, foggy, but beautiful. I didn't hear anything. Not too much going on. It was my last shot at getting a deer during this season, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna keep hunting out of the cabin until I get my deer, no, until the season runs out or I get my deer, whichever comes first. Uh, I just checked inside the cabin and nobody's home. Jeremy is still out. He said he was gonna do a little bit of a turkey hunt after his deer hunt. So I think what I'll do is check the trail cameras to see if there's any activity and then we'll also check those live traps to see if uh, anything's come through uh, deer wise here. We've got a meat pole going on. We've got one squirrel, two, three, uh, four squirrels on the ground. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six geese. Oh, look, and the new guest, a raccoon. So that means Jeremy's already been back and he must have either shot one this morning or found one in the live traps. We have uh, five live traps out here. I'm just gonna go down right now. And uh, I wanna check the advanced trap. That's the big, big trap we have. And we've been filling it full of all kinds of things just to see if we could trap some more food. Um, I'm hoping a coyote goes in it. Uh, it's, a, it's got a front mouth and a back mouth so the animals can go through it or they think they can go through it anyway, but they hit the wire in the inside and it knocks it down and then they get trapped. So that'd be pretty cool to catch a coyote. That would be something that we've never done before. Uh, we did try last year to trap a coyote and uh, we weren't successful. Oh, here's something kind of cool. I'm just coming up to, uh, looks, looks like there's a deer scrape here. Look right down here, and that, we're not really far from the cabin here. The licking branch up above, deer scrape below. That's pretty cool. On the way back, I'll take a leak in it, um, and I'll leave my scent there. And well, see, the deer don't really know who is peeing where or what human pee smells like. They just think it's pee, so then they pee in it, and it keeps the scrape going. Here's our big advanced trap here, and it's empty. You see, a trap in, trap over here. We've got a peanut butter with marshmallow top, and we've got all of our remains like, from so many different animals. There's geese feathers, there's organs from the raccoon, there's squirrel fur feathers, everything. And we've got a trail camera over here, so I'll let you see what uh, the trail camera's been picking up. Um, I did a quick review yesterday, and it was mostly a mouse. Like hundreds and hundreds of impressions of this mouse coming in here having a feed. So pretty cool. I think I'll put a camera up on this uh, scrape here and we'll check in as the season goes on. Deer is open for another couple months. So there's lots of time. It's just heating up here. It's not really going yet. I think what I'll do now is get back in the cabin and start breakfast because I didn't have anything to eat this morning and we're weighing out because it's our last day. So. The idea is not to lose any weight and to only collect wild foods uh, in and around the cabin. So this is, it's been our homesteading edition. It's a new take on things. We've been able to live out of the cabin for the six days and then make forays uh, through about 500 acres or so, uh, maybe more because we've been gaining permission of, as we've been doing this and owners have been coming on board more and more as they figure out what we're doing. So. They've been giving us access to other deer spots and put traps out for other raccoons. And so, yeah, but the raccoon story, it's kind of a weird one because we really haven't had very much success with the raccoons. Anyway, let's jump inside here. We'll get a breakfast cobbler going. So our apple cobbler is basically is going to be uh, a bunch of wild apples. We had collected this, I think back on day one because we knew for sure we could just grab them and then we've been adding to that um, some acorn uh, that'll act as a filter that'll act as a filler 
uh, but a not a filler, a completer, because it's gonna add those proteins and fats that we need. The apples are pretty sweet on their own, but we're also gonna add some extra calories with maple syrup. So as you know, these have been our staple items. The acorns are pre-processed. Jeremy brought them with him. So basically what he's done is leach them. And I think you hot leach them, which requires a frequent changes of warm water. Chunk up a whole bunch of apples, as many as I can, until I get tired of it. Tell you what, coming back to a warm meal is something that every hunter enjoys. So we're gonna try to make that a possibility here. We won't add the maple syrup until later because it will tend to burn. Looking pretty good, we added those acorns. Now we're just trying to soften it up. I've got a whole jar here of bear fat and I've, I've had this for a year so it's pretty much time to use it. I'll add it, it's completely unnecessary to add it to this but it is gonna add some extra calories and it's been out of refrigeration now for a while throughout the week, just uh, cool from outside. So we are gonna get calorie rich here for our way out and then whatever we can't eat I'll send back with Jeremy because he's going to continue with his big wild year. His big wild year entails only eating wild food for an entire year. It's a little bit different. Uh, well it's actually not that much different from this year's challenge because this year's challenge we had some staple items that we brought in and he's going to uh, take in some staple items with him continuing forward and he started with some staple items before he even started his challenge. So really this season isn't un unlike the big wild year. The big question is whether we were able to balance our calories over these six days or if we lost weight. Well, Jeremy's not back yet and I'm starving so I'm going to eat. I realize this looks like just mush, which it is. It's taking up a lot of the black coloring from the cast iron, but it's going to taste delicious. So on the maple syrup, we'll finish this one completely off. There's a little bit of sugar down in the bottom. We can scrape that off later. We uh, did start working on a new jar. There's no way I'm going to be able to eat all of this. So of course I'll shave, shave Jeremy his portion. Hopefully he's having some luck out there. If not, getting a deer, getting a turkey, or getting some squirrels. I'll mix this up. So this is apples, acorns, maple syrup, and bear fat. That's the seasonal abundance. We've also got some black walnuts here. We haven't cracked these open yet. We, sh we might be able to. They're getting hard enough. Uh, got a couple mushrooms here. Couldn't name them if I tried. Wadoba spice. Grab some wadoba spice if you want. And uh, we've got a couple different varieties of apples. Uh, these are European uh, imports. Basically when Europeans came here, they scattered these seeds all around. This one tastes an awful lot like uh, Red Delicious, 
Oh, or um, yeah, Red Delicious. I would say that one. This is more like, like, like a. It's a softer, like a. Sometimes it's sometimes it's like a, a green apple, like a sour. Uh, sometimes it's on the a punkier side. You, you kind of hit and miss with these, but these red ones are really good. They're really crunchy, and that's what I made this out of. Ooh, that is super duper hot. And again, this isn't a meal that you would be like, oh, that looks awesome. Problem is with wild foods is they obviously lose a lot of their color and cooking with the cast iron. No doubt. I'm gonna dig out as much as I can here for the way out. And then go for a walk, I've got a couple chill cameras to check. Um, if Jeremy doesn't come back in time, maybe I'll bump him up there, but I don't want to go disturb him in case he's on a good hunt. Uh, I'm not worried about him at this point. He did say he would take longer coming back than me. And he would go check the fields for turkey. So it could be that he's working some in. But we will find out as soon as he gets back. These apples are really good. This is super good. Super good. I think probably next time I cook that, I probably wouldn't use a cast iron. I probably, I mean, I don't like using the non-stick and the Teflon. But that would be the way to make it, you know, not darkened. But it doesn't affect the taste at all. In fact, it's really good. Feels pretty good to get out of my gear. You got some uh, cobbler all set to go, man. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you've got some cobbler, but I haven't got a gobbler for you. No? No. Nothing happened? Nothing. Really? No. Uh, might have had a hen come in super close, answering calls, but it might have also been a squirrel barking at us. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It was pretty... Uh, Did you go for a walk? Pretty close. Yeah, so to the squirrel stand, then up into the hay field around through the bush edge into the corn patch where I saw them before and uh, just like no activity but squirrels. Mm. Did you, you know? shoot any of the squirrels? Or I, I took a try at one. <laughs> yeah, but then I was like, oh, I shouldn't really be doing messing up a turkey hunt. So yeah. it was a nice one of those big fluffy gray ones, right? And it's just like, so he was coming through, coming through the bush with a big yellow cob of corn, <laughs> right? No, no, he stands out like a sore thumb. I'm like, oh, I can't resist. That's crazy. There's nothing coming to that stand. We'll have to check the the uh, trail camera. Yeah. So maybe we'll have to go back. Yeah, yeah. Or someone will have to go back and check that camera and yeah. see if they're even coming through there anymore. Yeah. Um, um, the at the edge of the bush and the corn patch, there's a spot where the the drill seeder missed. So there's like a big, just like soil patch in the middle, yeah. right near the bush edge, and loaded with coyote tracks. And also lots of pulled down corn. So I think what's happening there is there's a pile of raccoons feeding and a pile of coyotes coming in after the raccoons oh, crazy. hunting them. So it's probably a good spot for yeah. a, some some kind of action there. But Yeah, call yeah. them in or yeah. ambush them or whatever. Yeah, there's nice big trees. You or can maybe see. put some coyote or some uh, coon guts out there or something like that. Yeah. Just hunt over that. Well, so what's interesting is I did put a pile of coon guts and uh, goose wings. Um nothing's touched it no. just right at the squirrel stand it's just been like, okay. sitting there idle hmm yeah weird and i've heard coyotes every night yeah they weren't as loud last night but the night before they yeah. were going crazy yeah yeah and in the tree stand too i heard them oh yeah so yeah we'll dig in the rest is yours yeah so oh there, yeah yeah there's bear fat in there as well. right because <laughs> i had to get rid of it yeah that's uh it's been out for too long so it's a little blackened but whatever it tastes all right. It mostly the yeah, it tastes fine. It's mostly just the cast iron, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, dig in and then uh, we'll figure out what's next. Maybe once you have a big meal, we'll, we can weigh out and then concentrate on other things. We want to weigh right now because I think I weighed in empty. Like like hungry? Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't that it doesn't it's not cheating if you eat what you have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just eat six pounds of food. I don't think you can eat six, one. six pounds of food, but. This may be your best shot of winning. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well take advantage of it. Just, I could just weigh in now. You just have to eat it. No, it's not cheating. If yeah, it's, you're eating the food that we have. Mm -hmm. It's not cheating. It's like if you drink a bunch of water, it's kind of cheating, but it's it's disingenuous. 
but it's not necessarily <laughs> cheating if you can hold it in there. All right. You can drink six pounds of water. I'll give you a trophy. Well, what? <laughs> when I weigh out, keep in mind, I will have eaten at least a pound of cobbler. But you didn't also eat any breakfast. So no, this is breakfast. So it's all, it's all part of it. It's all legit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jump in there. And then maybe we can show uh, all the abundance that we have that's extra and load you up and then go hit the apple trees, mm -hmm. uh, walnut tree. Yep. And then we're going to send it all home for you for mm -hmm. the rest of the big wild year. So you've got at least seven geese out there plus a raccoon. I lost track of the most squirrels. Five squirrels, I think. Extra. Five, six. Six. Yeah, I just got one. And a little red squirrel. And a red squirrel by accident. By accident, it was, an, it was a yeah. bycatch. It went into the live trap and it died. It's yeah. not our fault. I would have let it go. Well, it's our fault, but it's not on purpose. Put it that way. Uh, anything else you want to hit up? You want to hit burdock, but we, I don't, I don't know if we're going to... Yeah, we don't have time to <clears throat> sit there and dig burdock. No. Nope. You'll have to come back. You want to come back for a goose hunt? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, goose is where it's at. Yeah, I would love to do that. For sure. We'll get uh, Mark to take us out again. Uh, black walnuts that we've been sitting here looking at and staring at over and over again. So we husked them out. We took the, the uh, green shell off and we've dried them on top of the stove. I, for some reason, when I was drying them on top of the stove, it was burning my eyes. So I think they're pretty toxic, like the, the rind or whatever. Um, the walnut itself is not toxic. Um, so for some reason, like watch out for that if you do that. And then we've just been drying them under the stove. But I'm going to crack one open now and want to see uh, see how they taste and, get, and describe to you guys how they taste. So let's take it outside here and we'll smash it with the ax. <laughs> well, there's a couple pieces there. I wasn't expecting it to blow up. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Holy smokes, that thing just exploded. Well, here we go. For all our troubles, we got a couple pieces. I kind of over smashed that, but hey, it worked. Just like I remember them tasting. Turpentine-ish? Turpentine-ish, yeah, Jerry's got it right. It's kind of like a paint. Um, like, a, like an oil-based paint with a nutty texture. They're not bad. And they're the favorite for the squirrels for sure. We've been casting them around here, drawing squirrels in like mad. They'll come a long distance for those because they're high calorie treat. So that squirrel Jeremy is gonna uh, show me how to tail it because I want to collect a bunch of tails. I already tried to do one how Adam Craig showed me and it's not like the strong way. It's just, it was on a, on a fox. So when you pull it doesn't tear. Um, so when I did it, I, I skinned up a little bit and then I pulled on it and I thought I could just get it out and it broke. But there's lots of squirrels here. I want to learn how to do it. So you guys are going to learn how to do it too. What I want to do is find the base of the tail and then make a cut down along the base of the tail. So you can see the tailbone there. And then with a sharp knife tip, as best you can, cut along, along the tailbone there. If you can split the skin a bit. Now, if you get the skin free from the meat, what it wants to do is it wants to peel backwards um, and then you're going to end up with a tear. So what I do is grab the, grab the, the skin really firmly and then hold it by the hindquarters and push, push the skin without uh, letting it fold back on itself as much. There you go. Mm, like magic. Yeah. So it holds on really hard at the top part. Okay. That's the trickier part. All right. That's a nice, nice uh, black one. As far as black ones go. Yeah. <laughs> the gray ones are a lot nicer. Yeah, they're really nice. You didn't get any grays, did you? One. One gray. Yeah. So this will be the first little bit of decoration for the cabin. I also have some hairs I'll put in as well, like cottontail hairs that I had tanned. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just keep adding to it. So uh, Jeremy said just put a little bit of tanning solution or salt, I guess, in a pinch. Ha, ah, get it? And <laughs> that was a bad one, right? <laughs> and then uh, you're good to go. So this is the, gr the black ones are not nearly as nice as the gray ones. 
So we're gonna have to get a gray one. We'll have to get a whole bunch of them. How about that? So here's all the surplus that we have left over that Jeremy's got to go home with. He's got two five gallon pails of apples. He's got a five gallon pail of black walnuts. He's got a pail of grapes. He's got five squirrels, two pigeons, and some coon fat. He's also got six geese. I almost forgot, he's also got a raccoon. So Jeremy's friend, uh, Steve, uh, he's been on Jeremy's channel quite a few times, but he's uh, he's down this way and he's, he's doing a mushroom course. So he's gonna treat us to a final exit meal of wild foods. So he collected some oyster mushrooms and we're gonna combine that with uh, some bear fat and the wild goose we had. So he's gonna throw that on the stove here now and uh, we're gonna have a nice meal uh, right after we weigh out. So I'm uh, Steve, a friend of Jerry's, new friend of Chris's. Uh, my Instagram is Stevie, like Stevie Wonder, underscore Funfer, F-U-N-F-U-R, Stevie underscore Funfer. I'm a mushroom dude, a hunter, fisherman. I do, uh, I give mushroom work workshops, I teach about mushrooms, uh, I do guided fishing. And uh, I live, I would say 70, 80% wild, man. I got a big uh, organic garden. I had some health problems in the past and I uh, have switched my diet and managed this really kind of crappy disease that I have. That's an incurable thing, a hundred times better than any doctor ever did uh, by eating stuff just like this. And uh, kind of, you know, turning packs over in the grocery store and looking at them and if I can't pronounce it, I just leave it on the shelf. Uh, and it's changed my life, man. I feel like I'm 18 again. And I'm like a 44 year old guy. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, come on over to Instagram, check it out. Uh, I do tips on mushrooms and hunting and fishing and all kind of fun stuff. I do a lot of cooking. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in the last few years sort of getting into cooking and learning how to do it well. And uh, there's all kind of recipes on there and all kind of fun stuff. Uh, Chris asked me to ID this mushroom for you. I actually brought some of these from a workshop I did yesterday. That's uh, Pinellas Ceratinus. It's the late fall oyster mushroom. It's a really delicious edible mushroom, huge in Japan. Uh, they're really abundant this time of year. They only fruit for a few weeks really uh, around this time in the fall. I'm gonna cook some up actually right now uh, with some goose. And uh, you want me to do an idea on that? That's what you're saying? Yeah, tell me how do you, how do you know what, what it is? These grow primarily on hardwoods. Um, these are much older specimens, so they've turned a little yellow, but generally how these really stand out in the woods, there's no other mushrooms you see that grow on trees that are green. They're kind of green. Um, they've got these adenate gills. I don't know if you know anything about mushrooms or not, but that just means that the gill sort of is rounded and meets the stem. It doesn't continue down onto the stem or stop before the stem. Uh, they're spaced in a certain way that I'm not gonna describe now. They're kinda can be creamy to yellowish. And basically uh, they only come out this time of year. So it's kinda hard to mistake them. It's a pretty good, easy beginner mushroom, we'll say. But also a really delicious one. <laughs> goose medallions. After all that work, we get to have a bite of the goose. Mmm, fresh gooses. And then it's been out for about five days. Uh, we'll talk more about prepping them that way uh, in another video. We're gonna go on another goose hunt, but in case you're wondering, they haven't spoiled. But I do wanna show you the process that we've been talking about here to age these so that they're a lot better to eat. Mm, it's really good, not overdone, nothing. It's gonna go inside and grab a mushroom. Yeah, too. I'm gonna sneak a couple mushrooms here. Yeah. All right, got some mushrooms here. It was very fatty with all the goose, with all the goose cracklings. Um, very nutty flavor. It's really good though. Yeah, really good. I finally get some more gourmet cooking here. All we need to do is invite a special guest. Well, that's the perfect way to end this survival challenge, isn't it? Really good. I don't know about you, but I feel like when I sip anything with my hands, like a savage, it tastes better. For sure it tastes better. That's why we do it. All right, you're filling up? We have one more ounce. Keep going. All right. Keep going. One more pound. No, I'm good. Okay, so you start off at what? 164? Yep. Okay, 164. If you lose any weight whatsoever, you lose a challenge. What? 
What if your battery died? It didn't. You just had to step on it. Same as every other year. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There we go. 164. 161.0. Damn. Three pounds down. You lost three more pounds? Terrible. These challenges are killing me. They are killing you. It's a problem. All right. I don't know. Fun? All right. I hate enough. I feel like I lost weight too. Yeah. I was 142.8. Yeah. 142.8. So we'll let's say 143 for easy math. Okay. So 143. 141.8. Oh, oh no! Oh, 142. 142. So a pound and pound two. Is that right? Uh, one, from 142.8 to 142.0. So you're 0.8 pounds. 0.8. 0.8. You're right. Yeah. Because yeah, but no, you lose. <laughs> Not as bad as you did. You lost no. three. Yeah. So figure that one out. Yeah. I sat and uh, I, I ate a little bit more, but yeah, that doesn't answer the whole story. No. So. So basically, I, I mean, te technically, that's probably when a point eight difference. Like, yeah, give me yeah. a second. It's not significant. Yeah, I can probably eat a pound of <laughs> food and a pound of water. So well, and water loss can contribute a lot too, right? Yeah, and I didn't eat breakfast till now, and it's probably past noon, right? It's like two o'clock. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, like if I would have eaten breakfast and lunch. Yeah. Just, so that so that's a system that works. Yeah. So we got bear fat, acorns. Um, we're staples and maple syrup. Yep. Plus all the raccoon, goose, squirrels. Did I miss anything? Uh, pigeons. Pigeons. I don't know what else. The apples, the grapes. Yeah. So that's it. That's the that's the recipe. The recipe is having homestead, I think. Yeah. And that, right, the rice, the wild yeah, rice. Yeah. That's a big the recipe. Thing. Is don't just eat fish. <laughs> that's what you forgot. The rainbow trout. Season. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have to have everything you need. You need a place to to go from to be able to go out and forage, and then come back, get dry, yeah, rest, and then go out and make more forays. Yeah. But, make a like, capital investment in structures. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just the structure, but it's this what the structure brings you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys have been following, that's awesome. If you have if this is your first series, we'll go back and watch the first. It's a little painful to watch, but it's interesting. Yeah. There's uh, one video we on my fun. channel. It was fun. It was it, We learned a lot. Yeah. You can't eat just pike. Nope. And that's what we tried to do. We went way off in the wilderness and uh, in search of wild edibles because we thought they'd be super abundant. And they were not super nope. abundant. They're more abundant around disturbed soils. Yeah. So that's that why was... we're sticking to where people live because that's where the food is. Well, that season wasn't a hunting season either, right? Where right now we're, we're able to capitalize on birds and mammals. Yeah. Where in season one, it was our only options were fish. Yeah. Uh, and maybe a nuisance beaver, but that was like our trial for the second season. The second season were a lot better. Yep. A lot better. Yeah. Well, beavers and bears. Yeah. We just still did it in the wilderness. So we're struggling to make camp. And yeah. Take the time to process things and eat it. Yeah. Whereas here, you put it on the stove. <laughs> And we're ready yeah. to go. That's and we we're a, that's kind of huge energy mobile saver. too, right? So every time we moved camp, we had to cut new firewood, reset up tents, the firewood build fire huge. pits. Yeah, yeah. We've got pre pre split firewood. Yeah, I mean it's really yeah, yeah. just throw it in the stove. Yeah, so you're not burning calories at night. Yeah, so yeah, we're living large now. <laughs> I'll have to do it again. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's it for us. Uh, if you enjoyed this series uh, and you watch the whole thing right, full stop. Appreciate your support. Uh, go check out Jeremy, One Wild Crafter. The link will be in the description of every single video anyway. So you know where to find him if you're interested in how his big wild year ends up or how it uh, started. Uh, you can follow along there too. And he's got uh, Facebook. So if you find through his channel, you find his face Facebook. He's a little bit more active as far as updates. So you see all the different foods he's eating as the season progresses. So catch you guys later. Look at us. Spotless this cabin is all cleaned up spick and span everything out Did a good uh, sweep up and uh, mop. I don't want to leave any food because I don't want to attract any mice Yeah, all cleaned up. Jeremy's gonna take that cobbler to go But uh, that's a wrap. That's it. All right